Hey, what's up guys? All right, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to go over the Lucky 7 setup. Um, now I'm going to make different videos on each setup. So this is going to be a single video and then tomorrow will be another video because it does take some time to master these setups and to understand when and where to apply them, okay? And the first setup that we're going to go over is, I believe everybody should know this, is a QM, right? Which is basically a headed shoulders pattern. It's just a little bit more slanted, okay? So QM high, low, higher, high, lower, low. This is a reversal strategy. Okay. So you never want to be selling a, a QM at the bottom of a range or buying a bullish QM at the top of the range. Okay. There's a, there's a place in time for when you want to play a QM. Um, the other setups that we have are continuation setups and, um, there's other reversal setups, but in this case, this is mainly a reversal setup. Okay. So remember this QM is a reversal and so it has high risk. I don't want anybody talking about, um, like, uh, like this isn't a valid setup or whatever. Okay. You only have high risk setups, low risk setups and high probability setups. Okay. In this, we have a high risk setup um that has a high reward okay so if you catch a qm at the right time and place <clears throat> then you know you can have a pretty massive movement with confirmation okay so and the reason qm is, is such a good pattern is because it's a double trend line okay so we have a low here a low here and then a higher low here okay and then we have a high and a lower high coming down from this angle so it has two trend lines, so it makes it strong. But there's, again, a reason when to take it and when not to take it, okay? But this is a very important pattern that you need to learn how to master, okay? So we have high, low, higher, high, lower, low, and price breaks this low that creates a higher high, okay? So we have a low that creates a higher high, then broken, so that it is a structural break, okay? So from here, from this high to this high, Typically what you're going to see is, is some sort of imbalance in this area here. Okay. Now, when you have this left shoulder aligning with, let's say an OB or a IPA, whatever you want to call it, imbalance price action. Um, when it aligns with this left shoulder, then it's a higher probability. Now, for example, this right here is going to be a body closure right here, right? So the body of whatever chart you're looking at is going to have a close right here on a line chart. We use a lot of line charts in 4D and we do that as well in scouts. So at this level right here, right, we're going to have a body closure. That is your entry point, okay? Now, the only time that you're ever going to use the wick as your, the top of the wick as your entry point is if from this high to here is greater than 25 pips, okay? Then we need to shrink our stop loss a bit so we can use the wick as the entry, okay? So at the wick level, we can shrink our stop loss. And especially if the wick lines up with the POI in here, then it also is a higher probability. Now in 40, you would call that a power move when the left shoulder aligns with our um, supply, supply candle, right? So our supply zone. So when that aligns in the same area, right? So if we drag this line across and then we have an engulfing pattern right here, then it makes it higher probability. But our entry point is always the left shoulder, okay? Let's look at this on a live chart. One second. this okay so let's identify this with a line chart okay so as you see we have a high a low a higher high that's higher than this high and then we have a low Okay, so I'm gonna switch back to the candle chart. Okay, so as you can see from here, from the body, you could have caught this entry from here down, okay? 
you know, we're not going into sniper entries right now. We're just learning how to look at QMs properly. Okay, so we see the high, a low, a higher high, a lower low, price retraces to pretty much the tick of that QM. Okay, so that's an easy way to identify it. Let's use our line chart again. Okay, so we see we have a high, a low, a higher high, a lower low. We just take this. As you can see, price trades right up into it and then down. Okay, do you notice how there's really no POI? I mean, if you wanna consider this an order block, sure. But you can see how price comes right back up and then drops, okay. And what you need to be doing is, is getting used to drawing out this pattern. So get used to looking at your line chart, whether it works or not, okay, whether, whether or not you get your entry model, right? We just wanna be able to spot these. Low, high, lower low, higher high, okay? So here's an entry here and you get a small retracement there, okay? Okay, low, high, lower, low, higher, high. This is still a QM. These are something else that is taught in 4D, which we called forgotten QMs. But this is a bullish one at the bottom of range, okay? See how we have this bearish one at the top of the range? I mean, at the bottom of the range. And, you know, it doesn't respect it at all. Okay, so you, you just want to get used to just drawing them. Um, if you see QMs that don't stick out like a sore thumb, if they don't stick out like a sore thumb and they go higher like this and it's just too much stop loss, there's no point in taking it. You want to have minimal risk, okay? So it doesn't make sense to take those. Okay, and again, we're on a one hour chart. There's literally tons of them every single day, depending on what pair you're trading. So yeah, it's just a very simple formula um, and knowing when to use them and when not to use them will come in further lessons. But for now, I just want you for your homework is to identify QMs, bullish and bearish ones um, on any time frame. It doesn't matter. Uh, you just need to gain 100 screenshots. Okay. So 100 screenshots of the QM. Okay. And doing it like how I showed you. Um, so we can ingrain it in your head because it's going to be a while um, before you're able to uh, really see it like, at, like, you know, as if it was second nature. Now, again, when we're talking about the QM, okay, when we're looking at it in this perspective, let's just um, make this green and this one red. Okay, what we want to see, see if I can draw this better. You know what, let me just draw it like this. So I have my high, <clears throat> my low, my higher high, my lower low. Okay. Let's say the QM looks like this, okay? We want to see this OB here align inside this left shoulder like this, okay? So if we can get that, this is a higher probability trade, okay? Now, if it comes up like this, you know, I'm still only gonna be taking it from here unless it's less than 25 pips, okay? I mean, if it's more than 25 pips. So if I have a wick above like this, I can take it from the wick if it gives me a smaller stop loss. And the wick should still line up with this to make it a higher probability. Okay. And that's all for the QM for now. Um, in the next lesson, we'll go over another setup model.